call the December 8, 2014 U.S. D. 350 Board of Education meeting to order. I'd like to welcome all the visitors here. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah, we need to add an item number six on the business items to discuss our eligibility policy for junior and senior high school students. Okay. Just discussion item. Any other additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, perhaps another uh, executive session for student matters, but uh, when we get there. Okay. Any other changes? Additions? Mr. President, I move the board approve the agenda as amended. Second. Move and second to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those day. Motion carries 6 0. The consent agenda is there in front of you. You have uh, additional bills. One set of additional <coughs> bills that were run today. Uh, we're not in the packet. And then this is an updated list. Uh, what I gave you, I had, we had run on 1st of December, which our state aid check came in. So when we ran this statement a day earlier, it was quite a bit less. So, but uh, with that cash balance, uh, it kind of shows the difference. Uh, the one thing that will come up with our, uh, in the legislature this year is talking about cash balances. And you can see last year <coughs> on uh, the end of November and end of December, you know, down to And to 107,000 down to 63,000, so we're watching that a lot closer. Uh, but we can't get a lot lower than that. You know, that's a, we're running pretty tight there, so we've watched it a lot closer. So that's 349 on that last one, on the 2014 column. Which you so that's adjusted a little bit. Do you have a projection for this year at the end of December? I don't. No. Uh, any questions for Mr. Meyer on that? If you've all looked at those bills, I entertain a motion to approve. Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. So I move and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, right. nay. Motion carries 6 0. Any patron comments tonight? Okay. We'll open up the business uh, portion of the meeting. First on the agenda, municipal elections. Uh, I wanted to get the board's input on this to see if this is something that uh, we were interested in, perhaps drafting a resolution or a letter to our, our uh, senator and representative. Uh, there's discussion <coughs> that uh, perhaps they may change school board and city elections from April to November. And uh, when asked why, uh, so voter turnout is the issue. Voter turnout is pretty bad in uh, spring elections. Um, uh, some believe it's, it's partisan, um, uh, partisan politics trying to get, the, get that into the mix. Uh, so some options would be move, move the elections to November and uh, of even years, which then it would be with uh, the general election for president and many of our uh, national officials. To do that would require uh, a partisan vote. Board members would have to declare a party. Uh, I think logistically they wouldn't be able to work out the ballots if they did not do that, uh, which may present a problem. You uh, couldn't be independent? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I think you have to. I think so. I would assume so because you could in any yeah. Yeah. any other. But you would have to declare uh, something. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the other route they could take is perhaps movement to November of odd years, and then it would then it probably wouldn't require a partisan vote. 
Uh, another difficulty for boards of education would be if you get voted in in November, um, would you take over immediately or take over in January? And then we would need to reorganize our board of education and re-vote on president and all of those things in the middle of the year. Uh, budget is difficult, but you know, really when you come on as a new board member in July and one of the first things you do is vote on the budget, but you haven't been involved with developing, it's, it's not a lot different. But you'd be coming in in the middle of a budget year, which might be a challenge as well. So no, no legislation has been drafted on this, but uh, does the board have any feelings on that? Which way we, should we pursue anything uh, on that? What's going to be cheaper for the taxpayer? Is it going to matter? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Our thoughts are leave it the way it is. Because I would hate for a potential board member to party affiliation to have anything to do with being elected. Well, being, just say you're independent. That way, it's, so, you don't put some it. people, some people may do that. not. Well, this is true. Yeah. Yeah. Here it comes. Yeah. You know, it's not about the public and the independent. It's about what would be best for the district. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, I, would, I wouldn't want to have to declare anything. Other than independent. I don't think it has any place. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any other thoughts? So, do you have a resolution or something that's been written up for? Um, the city passed one last year, didn't you? Uh, in regard to that? I have to go back and look off the top of my head. Okay. I can't remember, but I think we did. We'd like to see it kept in April and not the yeah. It would really just be the board saying, we think it should stay the same, please, you know, in a formal way. Okay. Any okay. other discussion on that topic? Activities on Wednesday night and Sunday. Um, before we you know, discuss this as a board, I believe we have some patrons that would like to comment. Um, so we could give each patron maybe three minutes. Do you have comments? Speak on it. Do you have comments? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I have comments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies, whoever's like to go first. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm just going <coughs> to express some concern with the cheerleading squad as far as practice goes. Um, we fight right now for gym time, especially during basketball season, and the girls perform in the gym as well. So um, in order to do the performances, we have to have the gym time to be on the floor to practice. Um, I am conscientious about the fact that if my girls have youth group or church functions, I always try to <coughs> allow time or work around those schedules as well as any other work schedules or anything they do. So I'm kind of limited as to when I can get into the gym to practice. So taking those away from us is going to make it even, you're looking at 9 o'clock practices till 10 or 11 at night for us on the weeknights, if that's the case. And I really don't want to do that to the girls either. So um, uh, not only with basketball, and I'm not taking on Danny or Clint here, but we have the rec league too that also comes in and uses the gym. So, you know, there again, I'm fighting for gym time again with them too. And I don't want to say fighting. I go in and I ask Mr. Bergen if I can have the gym time. You know, I find out, I try to work with Danny and Clint as far as when they have practices with all their other, you know, basketball or whatever, so that we can all work in, together on it. So, and it's worked out so far pretty well, and I didn't really think there was any issue. Um, I did ask my girls last night if there was any problems or concerns from their parents as far as this went, and None of them seem to express any problems. They said I've always been lenient and allowed them to go do what they needed to do, you know, unless we had something major going on. So I wasn't sure what the, you know, where this was going tonight, so I just wanted to express that really Sundays are about the only time we can practice. So thank you. Thanks, <coughs> Well, 
I guess from my perspective, I'm just a little frustrated with that. You know, I, you've got coaches that are wanting to spend more time to make their teams better. Um, they used to have practices a lot longer than we do now, to be quite honest. But, um, I work with my girls on youth group um, to a reasonable stance. You know, I've always laid out my 645 if they'll remind me. You know, and now, you know, I, I don't know how many of you are aware. We, we don't get in the gym a lot of times until 515 on a Wednesday. I have girls asking now to get out at 615 because they've got youth group in Hudson that starts at 630. You know, that, that's an hour of practice, and that, that's just, that just destroys your whole practice, you know, plan when you got three girls leaving. And, um, we, uh, I, I don't know, I feel like we've worked hard to work with those kids on that, and I, I don't see why we need to change it. Um, it. It scares me that, you know, we're starting to limit practice time. Um, you know, if, if, if this is the route we can go, then, you know, if I decide to have practices Wednesday mornings to make up for the time we're losing, is that going to be supported? You know, and, and um, I know parents won't be happy with that. But if, if I get in the gym and I only get an hour of practice time on a Wednesday night, then we've got more things to do with that than that. And I, again, I just think we're, we're trying to work hard to make our teams better. Um, I would hope you guys would appreciate that. And, and, you know, not, you know, I guess be happy that you don't have coaches that, you know, say, ah, oh, well, you know, let's practice for an hour and be done and not, not put any pride or care into it, you know, for, for our kids and your kids. You know, we're trying to get, build some, some pride in what they do and I think we have and, um, you know, it frustrates me that we're, we're thinking about, about messing with that. And, uh, and again, I, I feel like I've always worked with kids who have said something to me and trying to get them out at a reasonable time to get there. And uh, I, don't, I just don't feel, I don't see why it has to change now. Stephanie's exactly right in the fact that, you know, we have, we have limited gym space. You know, and I understand, I get why she's been going on Sundays. I understand that because there's no other time. Um, we have always told kids that if they need to be somewhere else, go. Never have we said, youth group, you can't go. Or you got a church activity on Sunday afternoon, no, you can't go. You got to, never, never. Um, I, it, it's always kind of been an unwritten deal that we're done by seven, which we always are. It had never been an issue as far as a kid going anywhere. Um, but when you have limited facilities, you know, you, you're going to have to tweak things a little bit and be a little bit understanding of, of where coaches from different squads are are with what they're trying to do uh, we're not we're not ever trying to step on church time ever and I won't say that it appears that it appears that we're not separating church from state I'm not saying that but to some, it may look that way when you start saying, well, you can't do stuff on Wednesday because of youth group. You can't do stuff on Sunday because of church activities. You know, I, I think that's kind of a line that we got to be careful of. And I know you guys are the ones making that decision, but at the same time, there does, with schools, has to be a, a separation of church and state. I, I trust you guys to make good decisions. Uh, Danny's right, you know, we work our tails off. And if it gets to where, you know, the time is before seven, it is going to be an issue as far as getting, getting kids practiced. It may be a case where junior high has to go for school or something. And I, I, and I will guarantee you, you'll be fielding questions if we have to do something like that. 
But if, if it gets cut way short, I mean, we'll have to do something kind of radical like that. Anyway, thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Well, um, we talked about it some last month, and Mr. Marsh prepared a policy for us to consider. <coughs> this policy was, uh, by really by coincidence, uh, on our list of policies to review anyway. Um, this is something that KASB has added. Um, and then it was brought up last meeting to bring that, so that's why I brought, we brought this one this time because the board requested it. Um, I got question. I got questions on this. The way that uh, it's written here, that we have um, exemptions for the Rec Commission, 4-H, MAYB teams, etc. Um, so would uh, Mrs. Hacker have to get special? permission to have a play or a musical mm -hmm. and then uh, we have there's been times where I think it was Stuco maybe had food drive this week last week mm -hmm. last week last week and uh, Melanda came down on Sunday to set up <laughs> tables she couldn't do that to be ready for Monday without getting permission. Uh, there's uh, uh, I, I thought of the cheerleaders practicing <coughs> and it, it seems like then that we would be given exceptions for everything. Oh, um, Clint, when is state volleyball, or volleyball, golf, I'm sorry, golf, isn't it on Mondays, um, generally speaking? Yeah, generally, unless, Depending it's, on the unless it's after Memorial right, Day. Right. And you yeah. leave on Sunday. We end up, we end up, otherwise it's going to cost. You, you couldn't leave on Sunday to go um, spend the night, be well rested, whatever you I assume on your way there you go and, and they play around the golf at some Right. Place. We'll we'll leave and play a practice round. You know, because typically you're traveling quite a ways and then stay. Right. And, and you and you couldn't stop right. and uh, play golf on the way because that would be practice. Yeah. And so you're going to get up at the break of before the sun comes up and have to drive how far it is. Sorry, and uh, no, or we're going to go on Saturday and have an extra night of motels, and I guess, you know, thinking of those situations, uh, I didn't know that there was, didn't think there's a problem with Sunday open gym, whatever, um, that, you know, you know my, my question is, are we going to let golf go on Sunday, and if we pass this, we go play, and then it ends up being that, you know, to me, we would be having an exemption for everything except maybe something that someone wanted to do on Sunday afternoon that's completely voluntary. And I just don't see the point of the Sunday part of this. And then I'll get to Wednesday later on. I don't think stretching Sunday out. Well, you know, that's where I was starting because I had the most heartache over that one because I, I didn't know if anyone that was required to be at something thought it was all voluntary on the stuff and didn't know the problem. 
and then on, on the Wednesday, uh, you know, my kids have went to the Wednesday night stuff over at Stafford, and my neighbor's kids went. Uh, my neighbor kid played basketball. I know there maybe there was a few times maybe that he didn't get home in time that Suzanne had to be there, you know, earlier or something. But uh, um, I know that I have uh, some friends that he's a principal. Their school has one gym. Uh, junior high practice. For his one of his daughters it was six o'clock in the morning. You know that I don't want to go there. And um, you know, if there's a problem with someone keeping the kids after seven, or well, not letting them leave in time to get to whatever it is, then you know to me that's an issue that. The parent needs to bring up with Mr. Bergen, and Mr. Bergen can talk to whoever it is that um, has this issue and kind of leave everything alone. But you know, I, I look back on when Mr. Kinman took kids to golf and for the past some years, you could look on the Catch of Kansas, and I looked when the dates were, and I knew which times you went on Sunday. And <clears throat> yeah. You know, there's times, you know, we all wish sometimes practice maybe was shorter, but you know, I would be thankful to get to leave early <laughs> from practice. That's just my opinion. Vance, you got anything to add? I, I don't like making up rules for stuff. I, that's just me. I'd leave Sunday alone because I don't think it's broken. Um, I can't remember uh, any of the major sports having practice. So I don't, I don't think it's an issue. Other thoughts? No, I'm kind of like Bass. If we leave Sunday alone for sure, and I think the coaches both said, you know, kids got to leave, and mm -hmm. the kids can leave, and I think they're flexible on that, and I don't have a problem with it as long as that's the way it is. I don't have a problem with Sunday, but I did have a problem with Wednesday night. Uh, I've gotten several calls from religion mm -hmm. teachers saying the kids are coming in late. You know, we're supposed to get religion at seven, youth group, whatever it is. We're coming in 715, 720. And I realize the coach is saying that, well, you can go whenever you need to. But if the practice is still going on, the kid's not going to leave, even though he's got to be somewhere else. He's going to stay there. That's my opinion. I mean, I, I think it needs to be 630 myself. I, I can't believe that. We that just we think that, that James, but so. we think that athletics are more important than our youth groups and our family time. I, I can't believe that we can we can say that. That's just my opinion. I don't think I don't think thirty minutes is a big deal. Cut fifteen minutes off junior high pra practice and cut fifteen minutes off high school practice. It's just one night a week. It's not. I think we need to get back to our core values. Can I make a comment there? Can I make a comment there? Can I? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Tom, I hope you don't think we are saying that. I, I, I am not saying that practice no. is more important than religion. I don't, I don't think any of us are. And so I, you know, I disagree with that comment if you think that's what I'm saying. And, Again, any time a girl has asked, I have let them leave. I, I, maybe you're right, 
about if practice is going on, they want to be there. They don't want to ask to get out early. They want to be there. Okay, I, I agree. But any time they've asked, I've let them. And even those girls that asked last week about 6.15, I let them out at 6.30, and I didn't want to, so we got to practice for an hour and 15 minutes. Very frustrating, but I let them. And so, you know, I, I appreciate what you guys are saying. You know, I wish you would just trust us as coaches. Or like Stan said, if, if, if there's an issue and, and you think the coach is not letting them out, then address it with us, because I've, I've let those girls go um, and I don't make them feel guilty for it or whatever. As, you know, I did have a problem with last week with them wanting to leave at 6.15. I, I did, because we just got on, on the floor at 5.15. But it, I, do not, I do not think, and I don't think any of these three mm -hmm. people sitting here think that sports is more important than religion, and, and I don't. But, but I also think that a lot of the... Uh, you know, maybe the people running those youth groups and everything, I think they don't understand that we don't get on the floor until 5.15. You know, I don't I don't think they maybe understand that. I don't think the issue is, <clears throat> is with you guys not letting them go. I think the issue is the kids feel guilty that they're leaving practice to, to go. And, and I don't want that situation for a kid, that they have to feel guilty to go to a youth group. But our message... Our message to those kids, and I, I, I really believe in this, our message to those kids is always to do what's right. And if what's doing right is leaving 15 minutes early, then you do that and you don't feel guilty about it. Well, why not take your own advice, Dan, and, and end your practice 15 minutes early? Because we don't get on the floor until 5.15, Tom. So you're telling me that that's more important? No, I'm not. I'm not at all. Those kids can still make it there. That's what I'm hearing. If you're telling me that you can't end your practice early, that they have to be that you have to practice, then I, I to me say, that's what you're saying. I didn't say that. I said I could let those kids go. I let those kids go. I, I had three last week. Again, again, that's not the issue that I'm having is is the coaches not letting the kids go. The issue is the kids are feeling guilty about <coughs> going because the practice is still going on. That's, that's my issue. I can say my daughter is one of them that uh, goes early and Coach Smith lets her out early uh, and she doesn't feel guilty. But I'm not saying all of them. Yeah, you know, every kid's going to be different, but uh, she is one of them that goes early. And Coach Smith has been accommodating with that. Um, my thoughts are. Sundays are fine, or they are. Um, Wednesdays, it seems like we have an unwritten rule with the coaches. And um, as long as the coaches continue to work with each player on an individual basis, I don't see a problem with that. Um, as far as gym time, um, my thoughts are not to impose a policy mid-year and disrupt things. I don't think that's fair to anyone. Um, I do think we need to revisit this in the summer as far as gym time, if there could be a better way to do it. Is the, there the junior high, I don't understand how they get the gym for as long as they do after school. That's for another discussion, but... Um, <laughs> can I, can I add yeah. something? Have we ever considered about using the odd fellows for any junior practices? You know, we've talked about it, and uh, the, the struggle there is getting those kids down there. You know, uh, we have to bust them down there, and there's a, there's a cost to that. Yeah. We'd have to pay somebody to do it. You know, it just seemed like an asset that maybe we need to explore for, for the younger kids. Just, but we've heard from everyone <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. I'd like to hear one. Um, I, you know, I told these guys the same thing uh, about if we have an unwritten rule. You know, I, this has come up to me you know, probably four or five times since I've been here. 
and people questioned, kind of said the same thing that, uh, and maybe it was in relation to an open gym, that, well, you have in this open gym and kids feel like they have to go to it. You know, and they have to make choices. And then again, the Sunday, Wednesday open gym was, that's what I had told them to do. Uh, that's when we limited it. Uh, we were having issues with, uh, we're going to have an open gym when there's a JV football game. Why would we do that? Not that Clint was uh, trying to walk on anybody's programs or Tara was doing the open gyms. We weren't trying to do anything like that. Uh, so we were doing those on Sunday and Wednesday night. Uh, the kids had to make a choice. And uh, the same goes with uh, you know, Wednesday night, even if we do put a time on it. If we said it have to be done at 7.30 and first week of, or 7 and first week of practice, we're going until 7. Uh, uh, if we cut it off at 7 and we kick everybody out of the gym, nobody can stay. Because then we have kids hanging around the gym, you know, getting some extra practice in, coaches willing to stay. Well, I as a player who's going to youth group, these other kids are staying, I feel like I've got to stay too. So I think the same thing applies if, if we say practice has to be over, but we let kids stay in the gym. And I think we would have to shut the doors, turn off the lights, and kick everybody out if we're going to put a time on it. Um, and I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Um, but uh, is, is but if we have an unwritten rule, I would prefer to have a policy in place. Uh, if, we're, if we're going to say this is what we expect, uh, then me as the administrator, Mr. Bergen, you know, it's going to be consistent no matter who's in our seats. We know what, what the policy is. And if we're not going to have a policy, then we'll just trust uh, the administrators to do what we think is right. Uh, is Wednesday 52 weeks a year, or, or is it just the it just during the school year? <coughs> So Wednesday in the summer is fine. I don't think there's a problem with it. My youth groups going on. I think this is a two-way yeah. street. If anybody approached those youth groups about moving their time, I, do because I, I was just going to say there are some that don't start till seven thirty, so kids have plenty of time to get there. Some some work with. They understand. Some, or maybe not. Because some of those times, they may be the same way for 30 years, and practices were different 30 years ago. I mean, they got out 6.15 because of junior high practice during school. So, I, I, guess, yeah, gym too. I guess, I just didn't know there was a actual issue currently. back to the thing. I don't have an issue. I don't like it to be a problem for me. Well, this year my thoughts are we leave it alone. But uh, I think there is a better way for next year. Mr. Burman? Yes, sir. If you're thinking of a better way. Yeah, I think of a better way. I feel sure. like you were talking about the junior high, you know? Mm -hmm. How long do they practice? Well, the junior high is usually start. They start, it's, it's it's they start at 3 or 30, and they'll go on Wednesdays, we get done by 5, so the high school can start a little quicker. And then other days, it's it may be 5.15. Usually, junior high boys are usually done by 5 or 5.15. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's a little bit earlier, depending on if I can make it through it. But most of the time, it's an hour and a half. You, would you, is that what you're talking about as far as next year adjusting that? So it's shorter? Is that what you're thinking? Well, why don't they practice seven hours? Is that not an option? Well, we, we've only done that since I've been here. We've only done that. We, we, we didn't do it to start with, and then we did it for a couple of years, and then. Uh, I think we, we, it's changed, and I don't think you can. We can't count it as a class. You can't time. count it. Yeah, there's a. There's a mm -hmm. Okay. The Department of that used to be our PE. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. And that's yeah. changed. Yeah. 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 There's, it's different than it used to be. I don't know exactly, but I, I, there's, re there's restrictions on what you can do. And, yeah. 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 
during the school day. But, yeah, like you're saying, next year when we adjust it, we'd we have to look and say, do we want to go? But we want to make sure it's consistent. So if the junior high is going to practice for an hour, then we want to make sure we have that in there. Yeah, you're right. Now would be kind of a hard time to adjust that now. You're right. Because I don't like the kids getting home at 730 either. It would be nice to just be done by 7 if possible. But I understand you don't get on the court until 530. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> So what's the next step? Mr. Mar, do you uh, receive many calls on this? Not a lot. Say four or five times. Yeah. Had Is one of the religious leaders talk to me about. You know, maybe there was one time it was uh, cheerleading practice on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. The girls got to come, but they felt, kind of like Tom was saying, they felt like they had to be there at practice and they didn't want to leave. And, uh, kind of the same thing, maybe another time on Wednesday. Um, with an open gym, and those were two specific ones I remember. But uh, I, I feel like if it's truly important to that student, they will be. They will tell the coaches. Parents will talk to the coaches, and it's not going to be an issue. Because <coughs> I think you probably got a lot of kids that are still on the team that are ready to practice, and we're telling. Them, you got to shut practice down. And that's not fair to them. If you look at our practice schedule here, you've got that on your uh, your iPads too for December. Um, early season, uh, trying to get more reps in. We may go 7.15, 7.30 sometimes. Yeah. Or as you guys say, that was, we had a few practices that were, at least on the practice schedule, it showed that. Um, and you see December, most of the time on a Wednesday, we're done by 7. Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of been a, a target time. Is that fair to say? Try to be done by 7, but early season we're not. Uh, is that fair to say? Oh, on Wednesdays, we're, we're done by 7. Yeah, that's what I mean, on Wednesday. Yeah, thank you. And any student that asks to leave early for something along these lines, it's not held against the no. player at all. No. no, you know, and we have kids that leave for college classes and other things too. Mm -hmm. I think we're stay as long. It's my thing. Carl? Yeah. I mean, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. Stand. 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 Is that uh, <coughs> just so we're, we're clear on this and we can maybe put it in the minutes if we're not going to have a policy about this? Uh, Seven o'clock is a is a good target time to try to be done if we're a little longer sometimes because we feel we need to. We're okay with that. The, the, Kids get out when they need to if they ask. Everybody's comfortable with that. I am. We're trying to find a better way this summer. Yeah, well, I'll be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but just one point you mentioned, you know, visiting with the Ministerial Alliance or whatever to see what their thoughts are on it. Yeah. It, you know. If they're dead set on that time, they can help us out. <coughs> or start school 30 minutes early. <laughs> you should know we would get to that. Won't affect me. Every day, I right? try to start early. <laughs> okay, is there any more discussion on this? Okay. Appreciate you guys letting us have any input. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for coming. Negotiations team for next year.
Um, last year was stand by bats and stand. Mm -hmm. I warned. I warned everybody. Unless, unless somebody else has. <laughs> I have like that idea. She did say in her email when she told me she wasn't going to be there. She she trusted you all could find a, we could find two volunteers to do it. Didn't include her. <laughs> well, we have Vance and uh, Carl. Do you fix that? No. Tom. 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 I don't know if I'll be on the board either. You haven't been here already. You can come up for election month. Right? Are you? Yeah. yeah. Well, know. I'm not running with you, so. Okay. That's right. I'll do it if you're not going to put Barb on it. I don't think we should do that for Barb. She volunteers for five years. Although she'd be good. Tom, Carolina? Okay. I'm going to a motion to approve Vance and Tom for the negotiations team. Yeah, Mr. President, I move that the board approve uh, Tom and Vance to serve as the board's negotiating team. Okay. Move and second to approve Tom and Vance to serve on the board's negotiating team. All in favor, aye. 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 Those may. Motion carries 6 0. <coughs> uh, consider superintendent's contract. You have that on page 20 and 21. Uh, doesn't have a salary amount other than not less than what you're paying me now. Uh, we'll figure that out when we get the. The teacher raises figured out. Um, this is just rolling over the two-year contract, so it'd be a further two years uh, next year and the following year. The number six on there, I combined a lot of those things to the from the KSB recommended policy. Uh, this is the wording that they recommend on termination notice and non-renewal. There was about four or five items uh, that were combined into that one. Uh, and I hope. We don't need to talk a lot about that section. <laughs> so really, this would just be a note to uh, approve that contract. Hire me on for two more years. Okay. Any questions? This is just a, a first look at the contract. We'll approve it next time. Okay. Okay. All right, approve senior release applications for second semester. Mr. Bergen? Yes, senior work release. <clears throat> I have four students um, that have turned in that are on course to graduate and will, uh, would like to go to work. I have letters received from the people that employ them. Uh, and this would start uh, when we come back from Christmas break, so January 5th. They would either go to school, we'll work it out the details, either go to school after fourth hour or after fifth hour, just depending on how they're how they work it out with their employer. So, but it'd be it'd be consistent every day when we leave to go to work. And we've checked credits to make sure they're all on board. I've checked with Mrs. Hacker, so, um, so we haven't had a work release for in a couple of years. We didn't have anybody last year. So, so we have four students. And um, Checked everything out, so. Yeah. Yes. Here. I'm sorry. Um, Bree Towers. Sierra Britton. Tyler Dove. Michael. 
Gilbert. Students for second semester senior release is presented. Second. Move and second to approve the list of students for second semester senior release as presented. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. <coughs> we have an added agenda item eligibility policy. There's a separate document on your iPads there for eligibility policy. Uh, you can help me get to that. Help you. Kind of tough to read up here. Uh, pretty wordy, but in effect, if you're failing two classes, you're not eligible for the week. Uh, uh, there's a lot more words than that there. Um, but really, that's our weekly eligibility policy, Mr. Bergen. Yeah, that's pretty much you have to pass six out of seven on a weekly basis. And um, it's been this way for 10, 12 years, uh, probably something like that. About five years ago, we added, you see at the bottom of the um, um, <coughs> on the bill, we added, uh, um, we had, well, it's always been Keisha sponsored activities, and we added school sponsored activities. Right there, the student will not compete in any Keisha or school-sponsored activity that week. So it used to be just Keisha. And then we had some discussion about it. if they can't participate in Keisha, why would they be able to participate in a student activity, like homecoming, world dance, or some other thing that's school-sponsored. Not a concert, not something that's part of the class, that's different. But if it was some school activity like homecoming. A band concert would be a great example of something that's yeah, that's part of class. That's different. You're required to do that as a performance class. So that's, we just added that. I'm not sure exactly when that was, probably four or five years ago, maybe longer. I don't remember exactly when we added the school sponsor. And it seems to, uh, we print this out every Monday morning. We print out the list. The uh, list comes out. We put, give it to all the teachers. That's what they have. Yeah, okay. And uh, it has a list of the uh, students' names, the classes they are failing. Um, that this is the list that yeah. you know, came out today. Yeah, that's one that came out today. I blacked out the names in the class period just so we're not, I can't tell mm -hmm. who's who. Right. Um, the first three lines there are on one block. That's one student. So there's a lot, most of the time it's not, there wouldn't be one line for, there wouldn't be student one line. Sometimes there's, the majority of the time there's multiple, as you can tell. So down toward the bottom there's a big block of four classes that one student's failing. Just where the, you know you can tell by the, the size of the line, and when when these are released on Monday, we get them to the coaches and teachers can look at them, and then every parent, every le a letter is had sent home every week. By the middle of the week, we still send letters home that states to the parents what classes they're failing and what the percentage is at this time, so they can look online. Plus, they get a letter. How's the letter sent? But, but that, that one's sent via mail, regular post, old-fashioned mail. Plus, we have the online eligibility. They can check that as well. But we still send letters home. How many people average on this list? Mm -hmm. it, it kind of varies. There's a, sometimes this one happened to be one page long, but you can see that of the 20 lines on there, that amounts to about seven people because there's multiple. So it, this this is about once we get into a nine week period, this is about uh, I say this is uh, what it looks like. It looks like 14 to me on here. That's about what it looks like yeah. all the time. And it's I can tell you that it's usually it's usually the same students that are continuously on it. Very rarely, our eligibility policy is pretty straightforward and it works because our students that participate in activities are very rarely ineligible. Every once in a while we'll have a student ineligible. Not very often. So again, on this yeah. list, there's six kids that are ineligible this week. Six of them that have more than one half. Yeah. So all of these kids yeah. are listed, but you know, several of them have one half. half. Yeah, right. Okay. Multiple. Yeah. That makes sense. So when we're talking about the in, the eligibility list. 
you know, it's a full page, but go with, there's six kids on it. Mm -hmm. We don't you know, grant any waivers, do we, on this? If you're ineligible, you're just, you don't get this kind of mail. Correct. You know, there would be... I mean, school, school, yeah. Like, you have, for example, last fall we had homecoming. Uh -huh. We had a couple students that were ineligible for homecoming. Um, so they weren't allowed to attend. Mm -hmm. That's right. And there's been situations where um, the AR points in English, uh, you know, that's a nine weeks grade, so it might not be done with that. But if I didn't have my AR points in there, I would have a C. So the teacher would say, well, I don't want the kid to be ineligible because the kid's doing okay in the class. Just it hasn't got the point. The goal, yet. the goal, ultimate goal. You know, we would, that, we would that has in. happened before. I know. The teacher would say, "No, it's behind an AR, but expect the student to get there. They're trying." You so may have a situation like that. And again, something that's part of the class, like band or choir, uh, you know, we don't keep kids out of the concert because that's an actual class during the school day. And it's a performance for that. If we have specific questions about any kids or teachers or any staff, we'll do that in the executive session if we need to. Do these, do, do these students that are failing, do they get kicked into a special program for more help? There's, there's nothing that's mandatory. We, we offer tutoring four days a week after school. And they're encouraged, yes. but we don't have a mandatory um, program. They can also uh, we also have, we have LS this year. We have LS at the end of the day every day. So those students can also, if they need to, talk to that teacher or work on something. If they need to go see that teacher about something they're behind in. That's that's uh, and we have uh, that's offered. We do that every day, like we used to do it a few years ago. So. We're we're, we're back to LS every day to see if that would, and maybe that will. Uh, I don't know if it's going to help you. We just we just done it for a semester now. We hadn't done it for a number of years. Every day we used to do it two days a week for a long time. So, are students using that after school? After school, yeah. 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 To be honest with you, we don't. You know, they don't use it. Some could use it more. Yes. And when we when we talk to when we send um, and talk to parents when they come to parent teacher conferences. And we talk to parents when the parent calls me, you know, for example, last week, two weeks ago, and needs to come talk to the teachers because they like have some concerns about grades. And I always make sure every time I mention, remind them, you know, in our handbook we have tutoring every day, except Fridays, that kids can take advantage of. And there's a teacher there on duty every day for 45 minutes mm -hmm. that they can get extra help. And if they need to take a test, if they need to make something up, if they need to work there. And if they're out for an activity, they communicate that with the uh, coaches. And then they go, you know, that's different than a detention for behavior. That's a different thing. Right. You know, so, yeah, that's available. We just don't, we just haven't made it mandatory. You know. <clears throat> I can get those back for you. Any other uh, discussion? Thank you. Uh, move on to communications, board member activity, and reports. Yeah. Other than I'm retiring. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's news. <coughs> yeah. okay, it's not effective tonight, is it? No. Okay. No, no. No. When, when's the last time I have to go? I guess this could be the last time I have to come. <laughs> 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 well, just cut your pants. Is it May? Is it June? June. 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 Fast 
attended the special education class meeting. Um, nothing new there. We continue to struggle to find parents. Um, it's just a matter of dollars and cents, not being able to pay them enough. Um, Mr. <coughs> Meyer and I went to the KASB annual conference last weekend. Um, Mr. Meyer was able to make it for the Friday session. I could only make it to down on Saturday. But uh, it was a little depressing, but uh, it, was, it was still good. Um, we listened to uh, Dale Dennis, Deputy Commissioner on School Finance. Um, it's pretty sobering to listen to the dollars that um, are not available. We were essentially trying to operate on 1992 money. Mm -hmm. 22, 23 years later, the same amount of funding. And we all know things have doubled, mm -hmm. so. Um, every school's in the same boat. Uh, he's always interesting to listen to. He, uh, Mr. Meyer will get into this more in his report, I'm sure. But, uh, the hole that we're going to end the, the year in is substantial, and the uh, the hole projected for next year is even more substantial. So there are going to be some tough decisions to be made. I think you're depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just in the lighthearted version. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyways. Um, we also went to a session on maximizing private funding. Had to do with trying to drum up uh, dollars from the private sector as far as uh, advertising or contacting alumni that has done well and would like to invest back in the community. There's a company that uh, can be engaged to help with this process. It's a sizable upfront cost. But uh, <coughs> something to visit about with the um, endowment people. Um, we also listened to some speaker on uh, hot technologies. It was way over my head. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's amazing what they have out there, all the apps available to the kids. Um, you know, the most interesting one to me was the translating phone. When you put the phone you know, video of writing and it, it translates it back in another language to you, a way of communication. So um, it was it was an okay conference. I think one last year was probably better, but it was, it was still worth going to. And next year, um, I'm hoping that one of you will, will go. I think we need to rotate. Yes. So you know more out of it. Do you much time next year? Yep. Do you much time? So. Um. Moving on to administrative reports. Start, Mr. Alley. <coughs> um, numbers compared to last month, we seem to be adding a student or two each month this year, not losing a whole lot. So that's a good thing. Uh, one fourth grader added. Um, 163 is our current K-6 count. At our family activity night, November 18th, uh, FCCLA and Lisa Cornwell kind of did a lot of organization of that, but they kind of dealt with like, well, there was a meal prepared and they did different wintertime activities that you can do kind of when you're stuck indoors and still um, just kind of promoting, doing things together with your family, that type of thing. Um, we didn't take attendance there, but there was a lot of people there that night. I mean, the cafeteria was pretty packed and there was several classrooms utilized and there were, there were kids all over the place it seemed to go well uh, band had their concert last Tuesday um, Mr. Or Mr. Knight combined the junior high one he added 5th and 6th grade to that so our 5th and 6th graders played a few songs in band I thought they did a good job um, everybody did a good job with that Mr. Knight was entertaining that night so it went well uh, Talked at the beginning of the year about the Ames Web benchmark testing that teachers do three times a year here over the next couple weeks, maybe even a little into after the Christmas break. They'll kind of do some more with that, um, kind of seeing.
how kids have grown in both their math and reading skills throughout the year, and then they'll they'll do that again at the end of the year and see if it's kind of where they're where we think they should be. Um, administratively, tomorrow I'll be heading to, to ESDAC and Hutch. I'll be attending a workshop on the PSYOP method. It stands for um, Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol. Um, it's supposed to be a way that, that helps reach some of the ESL students, um, maybe helps them perform better in the classroom. So I'm going to go see what that's about, see if it's something that would be maybe beneficial to bring to our staff at a future um, professional development day or something. Uh, we have early dismissal this Wednesday for professional development. Uh, we'll do some discussions on kind of technology, where we're at, where we want to go, and then some other different things building level wise. Uh, also have site council that same night at 6 o'clock. Um, and then the end of the first semester is uh, next Friday, December 19th. One other thing that's not on there, if you give me just a second, I'll pull it up on the TV here. That's just Fairchild Apple TV. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just turned my Okay. In art class, this is actually in high school art class. They had. I'm not exactly sure if if, if they in, initially intended to do it or if it kind of developed or what, but uh, they designed some models for some uh, bike racks, and then they had them on display at the library probably, I don't know, six weeks ago or so, and they, they let students go through and vote on which one they liked the best, and I think community members could come through and, and vote on it too. Um, anyhow, Sierra Britton's model was the one that, that was voted on um, as the one that people liked, and then through the Stafford County Economic Development, um, they had somebody in Maxville, uh, Williamson's the last name, I don't remember the first name, but who does some of that stuff. He actually, based on that model, um, built the bike rack and it just arrived here last Friday. It's out kind of near the old um, office entrance. Uh, he welded it together and then put the Tiger logo on it and painted it blue. So um, it's out there now for kids to put their bike on, do an extra thing we have there, especially during the bike unit when we have so many bike racks out there. Um, that's all I hear now it's up there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's over there. <laughs> and that's all that I have. I'm sure there's a few more leaves around it now. <laughs> <laughs> that's our leaf catching area. Mr. Yeah. Burgess? Yes, sir. Um, enrollment. I, I think enrollment. We might be one student shorter than we were last month. Um, our total is 164. I think we were 165 last last month. Um, and I didn't put on there, but you remember we had five students that are at the learning center that are included in our account. Um, so we're at 164, seven through 12. Um, uh, high school quiz bowl. We, I mean, you guys, most of you are aware we did high school at our event last uh, Monday the first week ago tonight. One team plays third, another team plays seventh. So, Mrs. Keys and um, is he, he was another lady's name is Felicia. Felicia. Pardon? Felicia. Yeah, Felicia Martin. She was. Those two um, have uh, done a good job of uh, picking that up to give the kids an opportunity to be inquisible. So, it's worked out well. Um, and Mr. Olive oh, mentioned the uh, junior high choir along with the fifth and sixth grade. Um, and we have quite a, quite a number of people there in the auditorium there tonight. So. It was cool to see. Um, some of you, uh, last month, you're all aware they had the Wizard of Oz. These kids did a great job in the play. Um, quite exciting to see um, that. Um, high school basketball has started, obviously, as you know. We got, this week, we have a preseason tournament at Larned. Um, it starts tomorrow night. So we'll be going there. Um, this past, uh, let's see, last Thursday, back in, we started the class leadership thing where I kind of explained where we have um, five students from each grade selected by uh, the names were put in by the staff to uh, be, uh, to do this class leadership with Hoisington and Ellenwood. And back on, in the beginning of September, we went to Hoisington for a day to spend with Joe Coles, who works with kids and works, was all over the country uh, promoting uh, leadership. Um, and we had the second meeting, was last Thursday at Ellenwood. Um, and we went over some stuff, just kind of expanded.
expanded on what we did the first time and did some new things as a group. He has those 60, so the other 20 kids from the other two schools, so he has a group of them. So he has all 60 of them out there. We host that, as some of you, uh, I'll remind you to be closer, it's our turn to host that on February 25th. So I'm not sure yet um, do that, which gym we will, if we can maybe use the lodge to do that. So um, it's, a, it's a cool deal, and these kids have uh, ideas about that. And uh, that'll be, that's February 25th, and I'll talk more about that as we get closer to that date. So it's something similar along the lines of what Bill Portis does when he comes and talks to our kids. And, uh, and Bill's coming in January, as I mentioned last month. Um, I put on there, I'm not sure, CPLC <coughs> meeting, we meet every other month, talk about schedules, um, activities. Uh, we have nine schools in our league, as you guys know, when, since Hel Ellen was officially in. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of our, couple, a few of our schools would like to have ten, and they, almost, almost every one time we meet, somebody has an idea about who we can get for a tenth school to have an even number. It's hard to, you know, some, we had Dyke and tried to get in, and they were too far away. Med Lodge, that didn't work. And so it's just, uh, but we tried to, uh, some of them tried to uh, see if there's a way to get a tenth school. Uh, this year, you know how we rotate things around to host different activities? Uh, this year, the only thing we host is the junior high uh, varsity basketball tournament, which I'm sure is at the top of everybody's list. Um, that's at the end of February, beginning or end of January, beginning of February. So, some of you, um, yeah. so anyway, that's what I got. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Burton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. um, this presentation is uh, some of this is from uh, KSD and. Uh, uh, you know, we've had a focus on career planning, um, uh, the board has, and uh, they've been working hard on that in the high school. Um, and with our career pathways and adding those, you recall we added the biochemistry. Um, uh, this is, again, some information from KSD. I want to talk through with, uh, with you and show you some of our data. Um, think to yourself, that True or false, every student should go to college. Cool. Most people would say false, not every kid needs to go to college, but if we think of uh, college not just being a four-year degree, it gets some sort of training after high school, VOTEC, uh, uh, even on the job training, maybe I get some credit for. We get closer to a true statement here. Um, how about this one? So kind of along the same lines. Every student should get some sort of post-secondary education. Uh, your opinion may vary. Uh, there's no doubt that higher education is more important than it ever has been. And here's a big reason for that. Uh, everybody knows somebody, my, my grandpa and he had an eighth grade education and you know, he's a millionaire by the time he was 25. Uh, everybody knows some story like that. Um, in 1973, 72 percent of the jobs uh, required either a high school diploma or less than high school. 72. And you see by 2020, that's almost completely flip-flopped. Uh, not quite, but so only 36 percent will. So it's more important now. These are the facts that show it's more important that kids get some sort of training after high school. Uh, I say after high school, maybe it's during high school. Uh, we've got plenty of kids getting college credit while they're in high school. Um, so we would have kids, some of our graduates will leave us with some college. It's a little bit higher percentage in Kansas, 71% of the jobs will require some sort of post-secondary education. So the question is, are we preparing our graduates for that success, to be successful in the middle class? Any idea? Yes? Kansans with post-secondary education? You might have it. <laughs> you did your homework on your, on your board packet. 52%. Uh, I don't have that number for us because that includes um, any sort of credential, <coughs> construction certificate. Uh, I recall we had a gentleman go over to Hutch. He's working on his credential there, and that's 
post-secondary training. Um, so these are really the same numbers, 34% of jobs, high school diploma or less. So the likelihood of success if you don't get some sort of training after high school uh, go way down. Post-secondary enrollment, how many of our kids are actually enrolling in a post-secondary education uh, of some sort? 77.2% in Kansas. About for for us, for St. John, it's a little higher than that. So we're doing okay. Keep in mind that number of 71% of jobs by 2020 will require some sort of post-secondary education. 71%. So we're well above that. Uh, but just because they enroll doesn't mean they are successful. Here's a, a graph of that of uh, those figures that compares our district in blue. Uh, over the history. So that was just one year that we were looking at. Uh, so we're typically above the state average there on uh, post-secondary enrollment. So when kids actually enroll, are they successful? In Kansas, 63% of them are. Uh, success on this measure means passing 24 credits. So really we're talking about, uh, you know, a a full year of college classes, not just some sort of training, but that would be a full year. Uh, St. John High School, 69%, again, a little above the state average. Again, that's for the class of 2001, or 2011. Uh, numbers are quite a bit different for 2012, I'm not sure. State average is even different, we're, we're above the state average there. So are we preparing kids for success? Here's another measure on how many kids have to enroll in remedial courses. In Kansas, it's 28.2%. 2011, our class, a little bit less, 23%. Here's a graph uh, showing each year, 2012. Actually, 2011 was a little bit lower than the one I just showed you. But 2012 was a little bit higher. Uh, 2010 was quite a bit higher. Uh, what might affect that number? Uh, the amount of kids we have enrolled. If we go back to the one where we showed how many kids we have enrolling, 95% of our kids in the class of 2012 enrolled in some sort of post-secondary education. If all of your kids are enrolling, the likelihood that more of them have to uh, enroll in remedial courses is, is higher. So some of those, sometimes you, those things will affect our numbers. Here's math over history. Again, the district is in the blue compared to the state. So generally, generally we're a little bit higher on kids enrolling in remedial courses in math. Reading. A couple years there, we didn't have any of in English, lower except for one year. Class of 2007, if we look back far enough where we know kids should have completed uh, within six years in Kansas, degree completion rate is 45%. St. John High School, just above that, 46%. Uh, so really we can only pay attention to this one um, I think the data is a year behind, so really these kids um, wouldn't have enough, enough time to go through, uh, especially for 2009 on, we wouldn't know. Uh, kids probably shouldn't have graduated by then, but some do. So I hope we understand that when we talk about college, we're not just talking about everybody needs to go get a bachelor's degree. Uh, it's uh, that's not what we're saying at all. Um, and it is important that kids aren't just going to get a degree because that's what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I need to have a plan in place. I could go get a bachelor's degree, but maybe that's not what I want to do. I don't need a bachelor's degree for my construction program. I can do just fine. Uh, so that's why we have these individual plans of study. Part of that is just coming up with a plan. Here's what I plan to do. Uh, here's the courses that I'm going to take. Um, but more important is the process of going through that, working with the teacher, the counselor, and talking about it, and thinking about what we're going to do. Uh, if I'm going to take 
my goal is to take calculus when I'm a senior. Uh, why? What, what, is, what course does that, uh, what, what career does that help you with? I'm just supposed to take it. Uh, we have a purpose for all those courses, not just because my friend is going to be in that class. But, um, this isn't holding kids to anything. We're not asking eighth graders to pick a career and stick to it. Uh, I would expect any graduating senior uh, as a college freshman to change their mind, uh, let alone when they're eighth graders or moving into ninth grade. So what is that individual plan of study? Uh, here's some, some things. Again, it's not a silver bullet, but hopefully this gives our kids a better chance to think about what they're going to be doing and plan their courses appropriately. Um, if we don't have kids wanting to go into construction, maybe we don't need those courses. Uh, we've got plenty of kids asking for health science. We've got kids wanting to do that. Uh, we don't have health science courses here. Uh, we can do them online. We're trying to do some of those things. But, um, so again, it's not a silver bullet, but it help, also helps us plan when we see those career plans. Uh, college and career ready, what does that mean? I wanted to bring this up too because that, that poster over there, uh, this is the state's definition of what that means, college and career ready. Uh, there's four areas up here uh, to be prepared in academic areas, cognitive, being able to think and solve problems, <coughs> technical skills, whatever that means, in the shop, on the computer, uh, specific technical things, and employability skills, showing up on time, working with other people. And then the last part of that is to be successful uh, in the attainment of certification or a degree in the workforce without the need for remediation. So if we go back to that, kids enrolling in remedial courses, uh, we want to get to the point where kids aren't needing to do that. Uh, so it's a process. Um, all of these things are uh, important pathways. We do have five of those now, two in the shop. Um, biochemistry, we added that one. This poster is old enough, it doesn't even have that on there. Uh, visual arts, and then our family and community services. Any questions about any of that with the career plans and uh, some of our data and what that all means? Okay, I'll move on here. Our site council, Travis mentioned, we're going to meet Wednesday night. Uh, uh, we were going to talk about the Wednesday-Sunday policy. I will probably update them on the discussion there, uh, technology and any other budget updates and things like that. Uh, uh, if there's anything the board would like us to ask them specifically, please let me know. Uh, our technology, this is one tool that we've purchased. Uh, really where we're headed right now, um, you know, we've had discussions about one-to-one, -one, you know, getting a device in every kid's hands, at least in the high school maybe to start out with. You know, a big hurdle with that is how are we going to pay for it? But before we get to that is uh, what's that going to look like? Uh, just throwing money at it uh, doesn't, doesn't create a, a situation where, where things are better for our kids. Uh, we, what we don't want to do is throw a bunch of money at it. We have to put them in your backpack and get out your textbook. And, uh, or even just to have a PDF textbook here, and I'm still doing my worksheets. Uh, if it's going to be an interactive tool to help the kids, uh, it's going to take some time to figure that out, how that works. So uh, this is one device maybe we're looking at. It's a tablet and a laptop. Uh, it's Windows-based, so we, kids would have to learn Office. Um, we've looked at some others that, uh, based on Google, it's only... Uh, online, they don't have, they wouldn't be learning Microsoft Office. Uh, so I think we're to the point where we know we want something like this on our laptop. At the elementary, uh, iPads make a lot more sense. Uh, so I think right now our, our loose goal is to see what we can do to get more of these in the high school and uh, more iPads in the elementary. Uh, so we'll be talking to staff about that on Wednesday. Conversation about that. Uh, elections, we've got some information in there for you on, on elections. The uh, page 53 shows our terms. Bill and Chad, 
and Stan and Tom, those four positions are open. Uh, so Julian has sent the letter to the county clerk uh, stating what positions are open. And uh, the file date is January 27th. I don't think you can file until until after the first of the year when the clerk has all that information. So I will remind you all about that as we get closer to that date. Our facilities, the library, heating and air, still working on that. Uh, they got the new units installed out back. Now they're connecting the uh, uh, plumbing lines, the cooling lines, and the, uh, they've got the unit installed back here, uh, getting the condensers installed there. Uh, and uh, all the piping hooked up, so those are the last steps. Um, we had discussed outsourcing for food service, possibly maintenance and, and bus. Right now the food service and maintenance are on the back burner, focused on the transportation. Uh, we visited with uh, uh, Chad and I got to visit with the guy that uh, we could possibly be working with for next year uh, at the convention. Um, I think that's something we really need to pursue and I, I think it will work out. We'll have to see what the numbers come back. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the KSB conference. Uh, um, the, uh, as Chad said, the stuff from Dale is pretty dis uh, <coughs> disappointing every time I listen to him. Um, they, they made the point that uh, you know, the state has to cut $279 million out of budget and that's just to be broke. That just gets us to zero. And that's with no money left over. I thought that was uh, the quote of the weekend. Uh, got $279 million out of the budget to be broke. Um, so Chad hit on uh, most everything else. Uh, my Friday activities were... Um, I've got a... There's a resource for superintendents where if we want to see, uh, you know, two A schools, what's their school calendar? Um, or... Uh, cell phone policies for high schools. What uh, what would those be? So I can I can log on to this site and find any number of things <coughs> that might help us make decisions. So if you're ever curious about something, uh, what do these other districts do for uh, for this or that? Uh, I can find that information. So that's all I had. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Session tonight. I've got one personnel item I need to update everybody on, and in the student matter. Mm -hmm. uh, what I have to discuss should take no more than five minutes each. And the personnel? Yeah. I need two minutes. Okay. Maybe two and a half. Um, we can just go ten minutes for both of them, have both of them together. Who do we need with the uh, personnel? Uh, just be you. We can include everybody, and if we need to dismiss them for a bit, we can. Okay. So we are all in all three ministers. Mr. Meyer, Mr. Burr, and Mr. Ollie. Okay. Ten minutes. This will be for personnel and for um, student matter. Mr. President, I move the board go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. Mr. Travis getting on the back of personnel. Mr. Meyer, Mr. Olive, Mr. Bergen for 10 minutes. And and discuss uh, student matters in order. Yeah, we got that part. Right. Student matters. Okay. One the other. Keep going. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and protect privacy and name of students. And mm -hmm. Mr. Meyer, Mr. Bergen, and Mr. Oliver to be included. Second that. <laughs> Moving second. Thank you. We're going to the executive session to discuss personal matters, <laughs> privacy, and all personnel. With Mr. Meyer, Mr. Bergen, and Mr. Olive. And also <coughs> to discuss student matters in order to correct the privacy of the name students with Mr. Meyer, Mr. Bergen, and Mr. Olive. And we return the session in 10 minutes after a two minute recess. 
Yeah. 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 Contracts. Yeah. 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 President, I move the board approve the amended clerk and the treasurer contract as presented. Second. Second. I move and second to approve the amended clerk and the treasurer contracts as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carries 6 0. Future agenda items. Uh, you have the list there. Uh, of course, that policy LED we won't. Uh, We'll be doing, I'll come up with a resolution for the municipal elections and uh, approve my contract. Discuss the principal's contracts and uh, maybe have some items to discuss for negotiations. Okay. Anything else come for the board? I'm going to make you feel good. I'm going to be here. Second. Good second to adjourn. All in favor, aye. 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 Aye.